North America and South America were not always connected. These were once two very different worlds, two diametrically opposed universes. For 150 million years, they were two huge islands, each one home to its own flora and fauna. But the moment would arrive when they would come into contact. Nearly three million years ago, Central America was created, a narrow strip of land that connected the two continents. The flora and fauna of both Americas would never be the same. From the north and from the south, a long procession began with thousands of species. Millions of beings prepared to reach new horizons and conquer a new continent. The carnivores invaded South America. Never before had there been such powerful predators here. And their arrival led to the extinction of many species. They were accompanied from the north by deer, squirrels, and tapirs. Herbivores from the south were replaced by invading herbivores in an incredibly short period of time. Camelids, tapirs, peccaries, and deer turned out to be more versatile and competitive and pushed out the original inhabitants. Possums made the trip in the opposite direction. These small mammals, the only marsupials in the New World, were so successful at moving north that they even crossed the Rio Grande and reached Canada. Also coming from the south were adventurous species like monkeys and hummingbirds. This is the story of some of the travelers who crossed over this portentous bridge and of the rainforests they inhabit. Located in the heart of the land bridge, Costa Rica is about the same size as Switzerland, but its biological wealth is comparable to Borneo, Brazil, and the equatorial rainforests of Africa. A significant part of this natural treasure is hidden away in its wet jungles. The finest rainforests in Central America are located here. In fact, one of the best rainforest preserves can be found in southwest Costa Rica on the Osa Peninsula. Corcovado National Park occupies a significant amount of the peninsula. This virgin territory is home to many untold secrets. Daybreak in Corcovado is a mixture of tension and calm. Nature here remains intact, untouched. She calls on all her elements to make each new dawn a surprising affair.
Scientists believe that there is nowhere else on Earth with the same area as Corcovado that is quite so biologically diverse. Corcovado is home to the largest virgin forest in the American Pacific and one of the finest extensions of tropical rainforest on the entire planet. Isolated and solitary, its size is perfect for maintaining significant populations of tapir, jaguar, and many other species which are considered to be in danger of extinction. The marguey is a miniature jaguar, and in Corcovado they live quite comfortably. Their ancestors arrived from the north by crossing the new land bridge. As the first of these cats moved further south, nature conducted an impassioned experiment, testing its evolutionary flexibility. The result was that in a very short time, they diversified creating new species capable of exploiting new territories. Some became extinct, but the success of the experiment can be seen in the wide variety of felines that still live in South America. The process of experimentation and creation continues even today. Currently, no fewer than 11 subspecies of marguey have been identified, all of which can be found in the rainforests that stretch from Mexico to Argentina. The marguey is a skillful predator, but not every mouthful is worth it. Anoles are small, thin, and very fast, and their throat sacs are quite eye-catching when expanded. The sac is a colorful fold of skin the lizards use like a flag to defend their territory from neighboring males. To expand the sacs, they use a small bone located below the chin, which is connected to the skin. This showy behavior is also useful for attracting females. Except for these exhibitions, anoles do not draw much attention. Still, they are quite abundant and catch an endless number of small insects, which means they play a very important role ecologically. For a marguet, anoles aren't worth the trouble. But for a dwarf boa, which measures less than half a meter, they are a veritable feast. This snake is another strange and rare endemic species that only inhabits the land bridge of Central America. Shy and skittish, the boa moves through the branches of trees and bushes on the hunt for small animals. But luck, is not always on her side. The Marguerite's territory is quite crowded. He shares the rainforest with several strange animals, and he knows it's better not to get too close. The cane toad is an annoying neighbor native to the area. Some have recorded weights of more than one and a half kilos. This amphibian has a voracious appetite. His diet consists of all kinds of small animals, insects, spiders, myriapods, and even small vertebrates like rats and fellow amphibians. Because of his insatiable appetite, Farmers on other continents have used the toad to control plagues of insects. The toad itself has become a terrible plague in places like Australia, where there are thought to be more than 200 million cane toads.
The rainforest of Corcovado is full of surprises. And the Marguerite, too, is capable of being startled. Corcovado is one of the rainiest zones in Central America, with an average yearly rainfall of 5,500 millimeters per square meter. Water is everywhere, from the mountains, where clouds release their loads quite frequently, to the coast, where rivers form wetlands and mangrove swamps. The abundance of water and variety of topography facilitate the existence of a prodigious variety of plants. Here, more than 500 species of trees can be found, some growing to colossal dimensions of more than 70 meters high. Within this jungle, large blends with small and life with death. Alongside gigantic plants, minuscule mushrooms grow out of the remains of rotting trees. Everything is quickly recycled, and everything is useful. The Marguet spends much of his time searching for food. Even at rest, he is still on guard. Lunch could be anywhere. His diet is extensive, and frogs are almost always on the menu. Many tropical frogs are tree dwellers, putting his agility to the test. It's not so easy to trap an athletic amphibian with slippery skin. Maybe next time. Although you never know how an escape will end. This tender frog is one of the world's largest and also one of the fiercest. Corcovado, the wildest part of the land bridge, is a huge jigsaw puzzle of habitats. The Marguet spends most of his time up in the branches of trees and bushes, like many other animals. They are all captives of wooded jungle areas. Among the most notable travelers to come from the south were primates. The smallest of all and the least abundant is the Central American squirrel monkey. Currently, the monkey occupies small areas of the Central Pacific in Panama and Costa Rica, 
a small part of the land bridge that lies close to the sea. It is quite possible that they arrived here from the northern part of South America, where their ancestors lived five million years ago, taking advantage of favorable changes in climate and the formation of new jungles. The squirrel monkey is a very social and active animal that spends three quarters of each day looking for food in the lower branches of tropical forests. Up until the 1970s, they were sought out as pets and for carrying out scientific experiments. Tens of thousands of squirrel monkeys were hunted until they reached the brink of extinction. Other primates accompanied the spider monkeys on their great journey from the south. Today, there are seven species along the Central American Bridge. Spider monkeys live in the upper canopy of the rainforest. Their habitat extends from the jungles of Mexico to northern Colombia. Their lives are tied to the wildest and most mature forests where the tallest trees can be found. Unlike squirrel monkeys, they prefer the upper branches. Their arms and legs are disproportionately long together with their tail. They have an ungainly look about them, but they are excellent climbers who spend most of the day hanging from their tails or limbs while nibbling on leaves and fruits in the highest branches of the jungle. They are very familiar with their territory and move about using established paths in search of their favorite fruits. Their culinary preferences mean they play a significant role in the spreading of plants. They are known to scatter the seeds of at least 138 plant species in their droppings. The margay could pose a threat to these small monkeys. He is as skilled as they are at moving about through the branches. Much of his day is spent climbing trees. He has a very long, light tail. He's a great jumper, and his claws are proportionally long. This description paints a picture of a subject of great climbing ability, capable of scaling trees, keeping his balance like a tightrope walker, and swinging from branch to branch. What's more, his hind feet are specially adapted so that he can rotate his ankle and descend head first like a squirrel. Corcovado, a fundamental pillar of nature on the land bridge, is home not only to small mammals. The margay must coexist with true heavyweights fellow natives of the ancient northern continent. 
The formation of the Central American land bridge three million years ago was a stroke of luck for the taper. It allowed him to flee toward the south before becoming extinct in North America, where he was being pushed out by ice and deforestation. Today, three out of four surviving species inhabit the South American continent. The Baird's tapir can weigh up to 300 kilos, making it the largest mammal in Central America. The tapir lives close to the rivers and marshes of the jungle, where they generally bathe, feed, and also defecate. This curious habit is to the benefit of the ecosystem, because the floating droppings transport seeds to far off places. The taper still has many primitive traits, but has adapted quite well to jungle regions. His head and neck are robust, and his body is compact, which makes it easier to move through the tropical vegetation. His most notable physical feature is his strange diminutive snout. It is formed by an elongated upper lip that ends in a sensitive and versatile proboscis. This organ heightens his senses of smell and touch. He uses it to look for tender sprouts and the most delicious and nutritious morsels. In spite of everything, his stomach is far from efficient, which means he must spend lots of time looking for food. For the Marguerite, it is even more difficult to get some lunch. His search includes all kinds of small vertebrates, and even insects and ripe fruits. It's not easy to sneak up on someone in the jungle. Luckily for him, these fledglings lack experience, and they are often the solution to his hunger pangs. Here, no one is safe from being hunted. No one is safe from death. Not even the Great Tabor. His remains can be found scattered along the beach. He was probably killed by a jaguar, the only predator capable of taking down an adult tabor. Still, many other animals will make the most of his remains. From the extremely rare king vulture, to the common vulture, the most abundant scavengers on the land bridge. Hermit crabs also see an opportunity here and struggle over even the smallest scraps. All this scavenging activity attracts a new arrival. The yellow-headed Caracara is one of the most recent arrivals to the American land bridge. He first appeared in Costa Rica in 1973, 
and is known to have entered along the Pacific coast. Since then, he has continued to move inland toward the north, conquering new territories each year. His troops have already been spotted in nearby Nicaragua. This opportunistic bird of prey is common in the southernmost part of South America and seems to know how to make the most of opportunities found on the land bridge of Central America. Just on the other side of the bridge, on the Caribbean side, the rainforest grows at an alarming rate. The Southern Caribbean is a paradise, a seemingly solitary paradise. The hurricanes and squalls that originate in the Atlantic Ocean bring huge quantities of water. The Caribbean side of Central America is home to some of the rainiest regions on the planet. These huge amounts of water make for lush vegetation. This is the perfect jungle. A tropical rainforest that ascends from the edge of the beach up to the mountains of the Central Range. It is here, on the Caribbean coast, where the most diverse range of animals can be found, specifically in the jungles that grow on the lower slopes of the mountains. The distribution of the Caribbean rainforest coincides with that of the many species that call it home amphibians, mammals, and birds that are spread throughout the shrinking patches of jungle. Collared aracaris form small flocks that explore the rainforests of the land bridge, especially on the Caribbean side. This is one of the most colorful kinds of toucan, and like all of them, it has an enormous bill, one-third its size. For centuries, naturalists sought the explanation for that marked disproportion. And at last, using new thermographic techniques, they found it. The toucan's bill is a radiator. Toucans keep their blood cool through their bills using an extensive network of capillary blood vessels. These emit heat when surrounding temperatures are high and during flight. Naturally, a bill serves many other uses as well. All toucans are native to the rainforests of Central and South America, with habitats that stretch from Mexico to the far side of the Amazon. The chestnut mandible toucan is one of the largest toucans. It lives at lower elevations in the rainforests of Central America. Almost all toucans prefer to move about and feed in the higher levels of the upper canopy, where they can find the pulpy fruits that they gather with their versatile bills. Toucans help to maintain the genetic diversity and richness of the trees they feed in. Unlike herbivorous monkeys and bats that grind and chew up seeds, toucans eat only the flesh of the fruit.
Biologists have shown that after eating, toucans leave the fruit trees and move toward other parts of their territory where they regurgitate the seeds. This contributes decisively to their dispersion. The seeds fall like manna from heaven to the forest floor, ready to sprout. Inhabitants of the forest floor benefit from everything that falls from the canopy, whether it was thrown by a toucan or a monkey. All kinds of invertebrates swarm about on the wet forest floor in search of organic waste. Microorganisms, fungi, and invertebrates make short work of the jungle detritus, which disappears at an alarming rate. Among the carnivore arrivals from the north, some have enjoyed incredible success. As dawn breaks, the Kuwati begins his solitary day. These generalists, experts in nothing who are diligent in everything, have managed to spread like an oil stain. Kuwatis come from the Procyonidae family, the first carnivores to reach South America. They've had ample time since then to evolve into new species, almost all of which are tied to jungle ecosystems. The Kuwati is an opportunistic carnivore that avails itself of all parts of the land bridge. Its notable snout guides it around its territory in search of fruits and small animals. Compared to most carnivores, its diet is full of ripe fruits and also crunchy insects. Caribbean jungles make up part of the tropical rainforest, which once covered a good part of the land bridge between the Americas. The tropical rainforest is characterized by its high temperatures, by the fact that its hours of daylight never change, and by its high precipitation levels, which cause an impressive amount of humidity. Caribbean forests grow in the rainiest area of Costa Rica. In some mountainous areas, as much as seven cubic meters of rain have been measured in a single year. Here, rain does not interrupt life. These plants and animals are used to storms, and their shapes, long, thick hair, and even their behavior are the result of this recurring phenomenon. Tropical storms do nothing to interrupt the habits of the Kuwati either. Each male seeks out his own territory when he leaves the pack at two years of age. At that point, he begins to prowl about like a solitary nomad. 
In a single day, he can sniff his way along three and a half kilometers of paths and trails in search of fruits and small animals of all kinds. The teeth of the Kwati aren't really those of a true carnivore, with sharp molars for tearing apart meat. Instead, it has cuspids for grinding a wide range of food. Far above the Kwati's head, the rainforest is hiding secrets in even the most unexpected places. The behavior of bats is quite complex. They make leaves into tents, where they hide out during the day and take refuge from the rain. Each species builds the tent in its own way, choosing the most appropriate kind of plant with leaves of the right shape and size. They also take environmental factors into consideration, like the height of the plant and its location within the jungle. Bats are responsible for the great quantity and diversity of mammals in Central America. In Costa Rica alone, there are 109 different species. While the majority of bats at temperate latitudes are insect eaters, they have had time to diversify in the tropics and exploit all that the jungle has to offer. This is the reason there are so many different species capable of availing themselves of many kinds of food sources, pollen, fruit, fish, blood, and small land-dwelling vertebrates. The first mammals to occupy the land bridge were in fact bats. They came here to the first islands. The Kwati goes about his business. Nervous and solitary, he keeps his tail raised constantly. From the southern United States down to Ecuador, Kwatis have adapted to a wide variety of habitats. From sea level to mountainous areas, including all kinds of jungles and dry forests. Their flexibility also allows them to explore the trees. Thanks to the claws on the sides of the soles of their feet, they can easily climb up to reach ripe fruits, their favorite dish. Crunchy protein in the form of insects helps them to get to sleep on a full stomach. At the end of the day, the Kwati returns to the hiding place he shares with some neighbors. Although their hours don't coincide, their day is just beginning now. Life doesn't stop at night. The Caribbean rainforest is a concert hall with the clamor of frogs in heat whipped up into a frenzy. Amphibians are one of Central America's identifying symbols. Some species that came from the northern continent have found their limits of distribution here. The same thing has happened with species that came from the south the bridge is their final frontier. This reduced territory is inhabited by almost 140 different species. 
The humidity is so high that many species have surprising reproductive strategies. They tend to lay their eggs far from pools and rivers. Unlike the amphibians in temperate zones, tropical frogs have a strong maternal instinct, and their behavior is more complex when it comes to caring for their young. Dart frogs carry their tadpoles on their backs to small pools, or up to the treetops where they hide them inside bromeliad plants. Other species like glass frogs and red-eyed tree frogs deposit their eggs on the underside of leaves to make it more difficult for predators to find them. For several days, the tadpoles grow quickly, suspended in the air. Then they fall into the pool of water cupped in the leaf underneath. Birds move between the north and south along the land bridge in a way that is much more fluid than the amphibians. From the beginning, birds have been able to access both continents quite easily. This is one of the reasons for the incredible wealth of birds that monopolize Central America. Woodpeckers are everywhere. The rainforest flatlands, low wet areas that make up the edges of the land bridge, are the ideal habitat for the largest woodpecker in the region. It is also one of the largest in the world, the pale-billed woodpecker. This is another of the bridge's endemic species whose habitat extends from Mexico to Panama. The mates stick together, moving about the upper canopy and the various clearings in the rainforest. Her large, solid beak helps her to find wood-boring beetles and larvae under the tree bark and inside the branches. Her long, sticky tongue does the rest of the work, probing into grooves and holes until she finds boring insects. When the jungles and forests of North America and South America came into contact as the land bridge was created, their respective animals also came into contact. In addition to primates and birds, the Tamandua anteater moved through the jungles from the south. Much of the inter-American connection is covered by the jungles and wooded savanna that flank the Caribbean and Pacific coasts. These animal movements caused competition between tree-dwelling travelers. The best method of survival when there is competition for food is specialization. This was the strategy of the tamandua, which looks for the termites and ants that live in trees. The success rate of the tamanduas moving to the north was relative, as they only managed to reach the southernmost rainforests. The tropical rainforests on the land bridge are witness to the complex relationships of their inhabitants. Behavior which includes symbiosis and tolerant feeding habits is not uncommon. The starring animals are sometimes surprising. A double-toothed kite, a kind of sparrow hawk, and a group of white-headed capuchins wouldn't seem to have anything in common. The double-toothed kite is too small to attack them. Still, he follows them closely, observing them. The double-toothed kite knows that the lizards, grasshoppers, and cicadas will take flight from the noisy monkeys. 
he waits for his chance to strike. This monkey has also gotten his hands on a crunchy grasshopper. In fact, this kind of capuchin has the most varied diet in the entire New World. Groups of white-headed capuchins roam their territory in search of food. Almost two-thirds of their day is spent foraging and roaming about. Slowly but surely, they climb up and down, jump and examine the foliage in the farthest reaches of the forest, from the highest branches down to the ground. When they find a good source of food, they remain calm. They are extremely scrupulous when it comes to food. They pick through it, clean it, take off the dirty or rotten parts, and enjoy the taste of these juicy fruits. Their diet is quite varied and includes curious dishes like the bark of certain trees. They dedicate quite a bit of time to scraping the rough surface in order to break pieces off. It's possible that this helps them clean their teeth and also to obtain minerals and other nutrients necessary for maintaining their health. What is certain is that they spend a good deal of time hugging the trees and biting away. But it is also common for them to find insects here. In addition to many kinds of ants, they look for the termites that build their tunnels next to tree trunks. Termites are able to live in these structures, isolated from the outside world. They also build paths that connect their nests with sources of food. After the monkeys attack, managing to eat a small helping of termites, the worker termites rebuild their tunnel under the watchful eye of the soldier termites, armed with their enlarged heads. For termites, it is very important to rebuild their tunnel as soon as possible, as it insulates them and protects them from the outside. Termites traveled through the tropical trees to get here, coming from the south, making their pilgrimage along the Inter-American land bridge, like the monkeys and the tamanduas that feed on them, following the trail of the wild connection between two vast continents. Thank you.